Live from San Francisco, California, The Cube, covering Mark Logic World 2015. Brought to you by Mark Logic. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Kelly. Okay, welcome back everyone. You are watching SiliconANGLE's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal and noise. We are live in Silicon Valley at Mark Logic World 2015. I'm John Furrier, co-founder of SiliconANGLE. So my co-host, Jeff Kelly, big data analyst at wikibon.com. Our next guest is Paolo Pelizzoli, who's the global head of architecture uh, and global technology operations for Broadridge Financial Solutions. Welcome to The Cube. Thank you. So, architecture, which means you have to lay everything out. Um, you mentioned you've got about 6,000 people worldwide, global operation. Um, man, you're in the thick of things. You've got to lay it all out there. What, I mean, it's a double-edged sword. You've got technology and you've got to move fast. So give us the update. What's your world like right now? It's, it's actually interesting because we've got technologies that range back around 50 years through technologies that are being developed, you know, as we speak. So, because things are rapidly evolving, it's, you know, trying to go through and make sure that we've got an applied strategy going forward um, and doing it at the enterprise level rather than at the departmental level. And, um, you know, the requirements change on a daily basis, which means any kind of traditional technologies that you would use, databases and so on, become defunct the second you actually put them in, you know, in place. You know, so we've really started taking a look at the entire stack, how we present, how we acquire data, how we aggregate data, and because we do this for the financial services industry, we have data that ranges back a significant amount of time. I mean, we have one system that has railway bonds from 1908, so it's, um, you know, it's an interesting challenge. So what is the big concern right now? What's the top conversation in your world right now, internally to your staff, in terms of uh, creating your operational support, DevOps, operations, developers, and customers? What are the top conversations in each kind of area that you're having? What are the, for the folks out there right now? Share, share that data. I think that um, you know, regulation is a part of our industry, um, especially it's, it's been increasing ever since 2008 and it's showing no signs of slowing down. In fact, I think regulation from the US is starting to percolate into other geographies, and you know, it's all driven off some very, very similar pieces of information. Who knew what, where, what kind of transaction were they doing, were they allowed to do it? On top of that, you do have data sovereignty and you do have security. You know, so to be able to do this across an enterprise with, you know, quite an interesting diversity of technologies, you know, is no small feat. And you, you really do need to change the game in order to go through and look at it, because doing it piecemeal, it'll take, you know, 15, 20 years, and we don't have that time, so. So, so contrast that with the approach that you're taking and how that's going to uh, obviously take a lot less than 15 or 20 years, you want to move much quicker. So the contrast was that, you know, we believe that you know, the schema side of it worked well, you know, through the 80s, 90s, and, you know, early 2000s. Um, you start taking a look at things like Hadoop that came out that didn't require schema, mm -hmm. but it was more from an analytical perspective that the latency wasn't really a requirement, the recoverability wasn't a huge requirement. Mm -hmm. You know, that would solve only one piece of the puzzle, you know, for us. It would not really solve the fundamental problem, can you re-platform, can you share data from multiple platforms in real time and be able to go through and get event-based analytics. Something happens here, how do I go through and percolate it to the appropriate people with security, with ACID compliance and all the other pieces that you know, MarkLogic is well known for. You know, regulation is an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. um, it really does have a time series function to it. You know, because as things change, if you can track what changed and who actually touched it and what it looked like before the change, 
you know, that's something which we really do go through and struggle with. And I think that the bi-temporal aspects, you know, are huge for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it allows you to, to, to do things with your data that you simply couldn't do in the past, or you couldn't do it at least fast enough. You could do it, but it was something which was unnatural. So you would have to create what they call an insert-only model. Mm -hmm. An insert-only model will go through and expand the size of the data that you have considerably. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not as economical. Mm -hmm. You know, with the bitemporal mode where it just saves the change, that, that's really where you go through and start saving on the overall storage and you do have the, the auditability right. at any point in time. Talk about the financial services industry generally and about uh, how you see some of these new approaches, whether it's NoSQL or Hadoop or other big data quote unquote approaches. Um, impacting that industry, I mean, we see that as you know, financial services is leading the way in a lot of in a lot of cases in terms of adopting new technologies, uh, try, always trying to find an edge. Um, how is both the technology and then the you know, the speed of business uh, changing the way the financial services industry works? Financial services, it's an interesting dilemma, right? When you start talking about wealth management, they're looking for how are people performing, you know, how is a an advisor, a financial advisor, giving you the appropriate advice. When you start taking a look at some of the other ones, they're a little more structured and they've got a latency aspect to them. Mm -hmm. So buy side and sell side have different drivers. You know, but I do think that people have realized that the old way of doing it has become more expensive than it should be. You know, you can do it, and financial services has typically gone through and pushed the envelope and whatever they try. You know, but I think traditional relational models, because they're so stringent, you end up getting many variants of it. So you'll end up having, you know, 100 or 500 warehouses, and it starts very quickly, the data lineage, you start losing it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's one of the main things that NoSQL, you do have the Hadoop side of it, you know, or the, you know, HDFS and, and some of the other technologies. You know, but I think that when we start still marrying some of the database capabilities, mm -hmm. I think that that's where, you know, that's where we're really pushing. Mm -hmm. so. What are the biggest things in big data enablement are you seeing at technical levels that's enabling organizations to move faster? Is there a technology innovator or enabler that's driving all this change? What could you point to if you say, hey, that's the, this one, this area of innovation, flash, is it hardware, cloud, is it software? Is it virtualization? Where you, can you can you highlight from an, as an architectural view? I mean, every you know, think about it. I think about like a building. Oh, we're gonna have this new <laughs> concrete. These columns are you know. I mean, is there a technology disruptor enabler for your business happening now? There are actually quite a few. I think that it's you know. I don't think there is one standout. You know, to be perfectly honest, you've got virtualization, which has become something which people have try to reduce the cost. Um, cloud, I think, is definitely something which, you know, allows infrastructure to elastically, you know, expand and contract as you need. Um, storage has obviously come down. I think that the application, there was so much noise out there about which one was the silver bullet. You know, I think that if you really take a look at it, the data side of it, if you don't know what to do with the data, all of these technologies are going to just go through and obfuscate it further. You know, so when you really take a look at why would somebody move to a new technology like MarkLogic, it's it's really a, you know, is there something familiar that I can take with me? And the acid compliance, which is, it petrifies a lot of people <laughs> and you lose it. Petrifies, right? yeah, they, they get deer in the headlights. They don't know what yep. to do. Indecision. Yep, and they'll say for analytics purposes, it's, it's fine. Ninety-nine or ninety-five percent is fine. It's it's enough for me to know which way to travel. But you can't do that with somebody else's money. You know, ten money. years ago, if you said my best move is not to move at all, yep. maybe go slower. But today, I think it's different. Today, it is very different. You've got to move fast, get that top line. Uh, so I got I got to ask you on the other end is is that um, what are some of the KPIs that you're looking at in your business? You look at the your dashboard. Is there a dashboard in your metaphorical, or maybe there is one? What are your key performance indicators of, are we on the right track? Are we vectoring in the right direction for our technology innovation strategy? Um, what are some of those metrics you look at? I, I think the biggest one is, you know, it's, it's a combination of time to market and cost. 
You know, if you take a look at the cost of what what we're using in the technology stack today, it's fractions of the cost of what it used to be. Um, making a developer be able to go through and turn around a request with the same data that they've always had, you know, in such a short period of time is, you know, it is a game changer, you know, and what we do, it's, it's a, um, the auditability and the regulation behind it, you know, and the ability to go through and scale it up cost effectively, you know, is something you, you just can't underestimate. You need agile. I mean, I hate to use the cliche. I mean, you've got to be agile, flexible, getting stuff yeah. very fast, out of data that could be literally parked somewhere in the organization. Well, the thing is that people always believe that the data has to come to a central point in order to be able to ask the question. Yeah. Um, we don't necessarily believe that. Yeah, we believe policy based that. access yeah. is critical. So you have compliance overlaid on top of it. And I mean, the thing is that it's, you know, the model we take is really trying to go through and take the data as raw as we can take it. Don't run it through a lot of ETL functions. Because the second you start doing that, you'll either change the meaning of the data or you'll lose certain valuable pieces of that data. Okay, you know? final question for you. We've got to run a break here. We've got the crowd behind us, folks. This is happening in Mark Logic World 2015. Paolo Pelisoli. Paolo. <laughs> it's getting late in the day. Final yeah. question. Sure. Share with the folks out there that might not be familiar with Mark Logic's benefits. What what should they know about the, the company, the product? What is uh, something that they should pay attention to? It's actually it's quite a long list, but if you really take a look at it, it does remove the requirement of forcing structure. So being able to go through and link data together that doesn't fit within a table construct or the limitations of a table construct and doesn't fit within the limitations of SQL, right, which is a structured query language that has very defined rules, um, is, you know, it is totally different way of looking at how you can access data. Being able to provide that data through API layers is again something that traditional developers are comfortable with, customers are comfortable with. You know, and I think that if you can remove some of the you know, let me massage everything to look the same. You know, I think that that's, that's something which you have to get some of the traditional relational folks out of that mindset. Semantic modeling on top of that is, I think, going to be the next major area that people look at. So, good, solid product. You're happy with it? Very, very happy with it. Yep. Awesome. Paolo Pelizzoli, <laughs> Global Head of Architecture. Broadridge Financial Solutions, obviously uh, architecture support and great endorsement for Mark Logic to have your your uh, blessing on that, fill the holy water on that. It's been good, um, and we are here live at Mark Logic World 2015. It's the Cube. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. We'll be back with more wall-to-wall -wall coverage all day. Stay with us here. We'll be right back after this short break.